Officials in Hawaii are struggling with an alarming increase in snorkel-related deaths. Ten people have died since January. On average, 17 people die each year in the state while snorkeling. A full-face snorkel mask is at the center of one theory about the rise in deadly incidents. So far this year, that type of gear has been linked to four deaths. A short while ago, I visited Honolulu to learn why the mask design is raising concern. She was a water bug. She was a water bug. Yeah, she was a good swimmer. Guy Cooper and his wife Nancy Peacock traveled the world together. But on her last trip to the Hawaiian Islands, Cooper stayed behind at their home in California. He says it haunts him every day. I picture her in the water, frightened, panicking, trying, struggling with that mask. An avid snorkeler, Peacock was trying out a new type of equipment, a full-face mask she bought on Amazon. But less than an hour after entering the water, her lifeless body was pulled out by a nearby surfer. I started right away thinking about this mask. Right away? Well, because I'm trying to think what, what could have gone wrong. These masks have a new design that covers the entire face, allowing snorkelers to breathe out of their nose and mouth, unlike the traditional two-piece snorkel equipment. But some safety experts say it's this design that may make it less safe, with greater risk for carbon dioxide buildup that could cause snorkelers to become dizzy or disoriented, and tighter-fitting head straps that may make it harder to pull off in an emergency, something yeah, Cooper suspects happened to his wife. This. I wrote to the coroner, and I said, wouldn't you want to know what she was using? The ER never asked those questions. You never asked those questions. Apparently, no one is asking those questions. And couldn't that be a contributing factor? But until last year, the type of equipment used in snorkel-related deaths or near deaths was never recorded. No one will know if they're dangerous or not until you put it in a database, look for trends. This is ground zero for it. Hawaii is ground Hawaii zero. Hawaii is ground zero for the snorkeling-related incidents. And Ralph Goto recently point retired point. as Honolulu's no, director of ocean safety after 30 years. He now co-chairs a committee investigating the spike in snorkel-related deaths along with the Hawaii Department of Health. There's the full face mask theory. There's issues of pre-existing medical conditions. There's theories of inexperience, and all of them have some credence. So we're asking the first responders to gather the equipment that's involved in these cases. But as for the masks... More and more people are using the full face mask. Lifeguards like Kawika Eckhart and his team are responsible for the safety of an average of 2,600 visitors each day at Hanauma Bay. He says it's too early to know if they put snorkelers in greater danger. We're looking into if there is a connection to snorkel drownings and, and the full face mask. Have you tried one of these? Yes. And what'd you think? No comment. One manufacturer of the full face masks, Head USA, said in a statement, the safety of our customers and the performance of our equipment have always been our first priorities. Adding the product was put through rigorous testing protocols, including the measurement of potential CO2 buildup. The statement went on to say their success has spawned a number of low-cost copycat masks, whose expertise, design, and manufacturing experience are unknown. It's something that troubles Robert Whitner, founder of Snorkel Bobs, one of Hawaii's top snorkel equipment retailers. I get three or four inquiries a week from Chinese manufacturers. You must carry these. Please send your address. We'll send samples. And my response is always the same. No, thank you. Please put them in the dumpster. Whitner decided against carrying any of the full face masks after his researchers tested them. They said that the face area heats up and gave them a feeling of claustrophobia. They could not reach their nose to clear. It's hazardous. And if you try to get the mask off in a hurry and you're not thinking clearly, it can stick. But there are snorkeling fatalities way before there were one-piece masks. I think we have to look at it uh, in totality. Is it the snorkel? Is it the mask? We don't know for certain right now what's going on, but we're certainly trying to find out. Cooper may never know exactly what caused his wife's death, but for now... I just wouldn't want someone else to go through what I went through losing her. All right, let's dig into this with more on what Hawaii is doing to prevent these types of accidents. Nathan Eagle is a reporter and a photographer for Honolulu Civil Beat. He joins me now via Skype. Uh, Nathan, thank you very much. 
Thank you. So exp you've been reporting on the dangers facing the public uh, with these full face snorkel masks for quite some time. Explain what the appeal is. So yeah, that's right. I have been reporting about this for quite a while. The appeal is that it's that's billed to you as, as being easier for, for novices in particular. You know, you've got the mask over the entire face. And so you don't have that tube in your mouth and then the, uh, the goggles or mask here. It's supposed to be easier, it's supposed to be, be a wider uh, field of vision as well. And that's why, why they are marketing them this way. Yeah, you know, and when we were in Hawaii, we spoke to some children. You're seeing one of the young girls that uh, we spoke to uh, in that video. And she said what you said, which is that they're uncomfortable using a traditional snorkel and mask because they don't breathe normally. But when you put on the full face mask, it's like you're basically the, t the type of breathing you do on dry land. And for children, that makes it interesting. But for people who have been longtime snorkelers, people who have been longtime divers, almost everyone I spoke to says they would not use them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, it's across the board in terms of the experts I've talked to. They're like, these things are inherently dangerous. There's a lot of different things that can go wrong. And they're being marketed to a population that might be least familiar with snorkeling in general. When we were in Hawaii, I spoke to Dr. Philip Foti, who I know you know very well. He's a pulmonary disease specialist and also on a new subcommittee with Hawaiian state officials and safety experts trying to understand what's causing the rise in snorkel-related deaths. I want to play a little bit about what he had to say about uh, the death of Guy Cooper's wife, Nancy. I, you know, that's not the reason, but that's one of the reasons. There are a lot of reasons why I, I believe it's quite likely that she did have an episode that was related to the construction and the, and the uh, uh, design of the mask. You know, Nathan, I know that you know Guy Cooper well. and You know the story of his wife, Nancy Peacock. Uh, you've spoken to Dr. Fodi. What else has he and other experts told you about the health risks associated with these types of masks? So uh, Guy Cooper, you know, of course, is who flagged this for me. It was, I guess, November 2016, he started calling me and, and urging me to look into this. And then talking to Dr. Fodi and all these experts since, they're saying that, hey, these masks might inherently uh, be dangerous because there's a potential for carbon dioxide to build up that could make you, you know, feel faint or weak, potentially even pass out. They're also, with the design, the straps come across the back uh, higher and lower than the uh, traditional mask, which can be harder to take it off in a hurry if you find yourself in danger. You know, you get a little um, salt water in your mouth or it starts leaking or fogs up, anything that can trigger kind of a little bit of a panic, it can be a little bit harder to remove these in a hurry. And also, Guy, what he told us was that he was really surprised uh, when Nancy was pulled out of the water that the mask that she was wearing was somehow lost. And Hawaiian state officials told us that up until Guy started to be very vocal about this, that they were not keeping any of the equipment that um, somebody might have been using uh, when they were pulled from the water in the case of drowning. Just give us a little sense of what Hawaii is doing subsequent to Guy's activism. Well, you're exactly right. That was one big change in policy that came right away is, is the mask and anything like that that could be evidence, essentially, is now being kept so that they can look back and see, hey, what was wrong with maybe that particular mask or that particular brand so that over the long term we can see some trends, hopefully. The other big policy change we've seen is all the counties uh, agree and, and come together to decide to track what type of equipment was being used. Was it a full face mask or was it a regular mask? So when we had that spate of drownings on Maui earlier this year, I think there were 10 in like three weeks, we were able to see, okay, wow, two of those at least, they were, the snorkelers were wearing these full face masks and we were able to log that data, which the state is going to, uh, they say anyway, I find very useful, over, again, over the long term though. You know, and, and finally, Nathan, one of the reasons why I was uh, drawn to this story is I actually didn't know Guy's story until I started doing some research when I was on vacation in Hawaii back in December. I saw some swimmers using a full face mask. I'm a longtime snorkeler, and I thought to myself, well, that looks pretty cool. I want to try <laughs> one of those, right? And uh, my girlfriend said to me, well, hold on. Let's find out what these masks are all about. We spoke to some of the guys at the dive shop at our resort, and they told us that they were, that they had tested these masks and they didn't think that they were safe, and so they told the resort not to get them and then he said something that was really interesting he said and, and actually very tragic and sad he said at the resort next door there was a guy from Colorado who died just yesterday he was out there snorkeling with a mask just like this one and that's when I started researching I looked up your pieces your articles and we started to take some interest in the story and so 
what you've discovered and what the statistics show is that more people from the mainland have died in snorkel related accidents than local folks in Hawaii. Is that what your research shows? Absolutely. Um, we started logging some of that data uh, ourselves over the course of a year, which is what led to some of the first uh, series we did on ocean safety, and then compiling that with uh, Department of Health data. So it's, it's not just people from the mainland, but from uh, Japan and other uh, places that like to visit. And so I think it was over between 2007, 2016, somewhere around there, like a 10 year period, we had 169 or so folks drown, 100, and that was just drowning um, by snorkeling. Uh, 156 of those were visitors, so it's just overwhelmingly a problem that visitors in particular are having. Well, Nathan Eagle uh, from Civil Beat in Hawaii, thank you so much for your reporting and thank you for joining us here on CBSN. We really appreciate it. Thanks. It was my pleasure.